Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1.6 scale German SDKFZ 222 armored car. Since the last video update, all of the model's interior cab detailing has been completed, painted, and weathered. The cab is also now permanently mounted to the chassis. The chassis and the hull are now one piece. Get a good look at the inside of the model. As we can see, the model's interior has been fully painted. The cabin interior is painted with an off-white color. This is as per the real German vehicles. Unlike American vehicles, which were painted with a white on the interior, on the German interior from World War II, they are painted with an off-white and a creamy color. For the color, I simply found a can of spray paint that was a very very close match to that from the real German vehicles that I've seen. After the interior coloring was added the weathering was added to the interior and was washed on. Once the wash was complete the whole chassis and the upper cabin were then mounted to each other via the straps that were mentioned in an earlier video. Body is now one piece with the chassis. The way that the body is affixed to the chassis is without any adhesives and is mounted on like it is on the real one via these metal straps that we have here. Like I mentioned in an earlier video, the 222's body was, a cha was attached to the chassis via these metal straps. These metal straps are found throughout the length of the body and they actually go ahead and hug the frame. The clamp itself is a U-type clamp that has two threaded shafts that are welded, or in this case soldered, to the metal bracket. Then it is fitted over the chassis it is fitted over the chassis and a metal strap then is inserted and is held in place via two fasteners. Once those two nuts are tightened onto the U-frame. It holds the chassis to the body extremely well and without any play. As I mentioned earlier, there is absolutely no glues or adhesives used for the mounting of these two surfaces. It is only held on via these straps. Before I was able to get the body painted, I had to first complete the front portion of the cab. To do this, I had to fabricate the internal vision blocks for the armored car's visors. Here are the visors here in the completed state. The visors themselves are a new recent addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line, and these visors were found on many German World War II AFV. Such vehicles would include the SDKFZ 222 armored car, 223, as well as the 250 and possibly even the 251 half track. The 234 Puma is another vehicle that I've seen these type of visors mounted on the interior. The visors themselves are all made out of resin with metal components and what makes them unique is that the vision block that we could see here with light em emitting through it is actually casted out of clear resin. Because of that no painting is required and does give for a realistic appearance. And here's the interior portion of the vehicle, taken from inside the model. Here we can see a better view of the visors. The 222 utilizes two types of visors. You have the type that actually hinge upward, which are found on the driver's side, the main driver's visor, as well as the one here on the what would be the passenger side. These visors here are actually designed to work on the real 222. There's a little locking lever here. By turning this lever, 
it actuates this rod and unlocks the visor from its place. The visor would then be able to rotate out of the armor car, allowing the driver to get better access and also maybe a little ventilation. The visors themselves are actually hinged because on the real 222 and on the real armor cars, these pieces are interchangeable. You would lift, you would turn this small little crank over here, and then the visor would then drop down. The purpose of the drop down feature is to replace the glass prism in case for any reason it gets damaged or it gets shot at. Spare visors are kept in the vehicle, and what the crew member would do is if he loses a visor, he pivots it down changes out the prism cartridge and then replaces it and pivots it back up and locks it in place and the driver is then good to go. The version here on the passenger side is a little bit different than the other version. If we notice it is a lot simpler there is no locking pivoting mechanism. This is because this visor here is actually bolted to the front armor plate via these four bolts that we see here on the interior portion of the armor car. However, even though it does not pivot, the prism itself is made to be replaced in case it gets damaged. As was mentioned earlier, these visors, both the hinged version as well as the non-hinged version here, are available and listed on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. Another new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line is the vehicle's instrument panel. The instrument panel here is a resin casting and also comes with a little with a piece of paper that has the markings for the gauges as well as some of the identification tags that are included with it. The identification tags simply get cut off of the paper backing and get glued onto your resin piece. Once you get glued on, you could either brush some clear lacquer onto the gauges or you could do what I did and if you have access to a clear two-part epoxy, like a five-minute epoxy, something that you would find in a hobby shop, you could easily just mix up the five-minute epoxy and use it to replicate the lenses that are found on the gauges. And here goes the dashboard, fully painted and detailed before installation. The dashboard itself is very detailed and has not only its actual details molded in but it also has with it the labels as well as the gauging details. The labels are come with the kit and include all of the gauges that we see here as well as two little identification tags. All these labels here were recreated in Adobe Illustrator and are based off of the real gauges that are found on a restored SDK of Z222 armor car. The gauge layout is actually very similar to that of actually German sports cars. If you ever saw a BMW or a Porsche, a lot of these gauges are found on the on the car on the sports car themselves. Gauges break down as follows. This gauge here is your clock, just a standard uh, just a standard analog clock. This one here is your speedometer and odometer meter. We could have if we could see here at a small little odometer detailing as well as the speedometer clock face itself. This gauge over here is actually the temperature for the oil and the water. Oil is on top and the water is on the bottom. The large gauge in the middle is some kind of a temperature gauge for two type of containers. The, it says on the gauge itself Behaler 1 and Behaler 2 which means container 1 and container 2. As for what containers those are, I'm not sure. However, if it was on the real gauge, it is going to be present on the scaled down version. Progressing with the interior, we have another fabricated mount here. This mount here holds onto the canteen as well as a food ration tin. Also, on mounted positioned on the same bracket, is if we follow, if I zoom in, you will see here an elaborate, an elaborate clamp mechanism that would be for the foul weather driving hood. The foul weather driving hood would be mounted into the visor, the driver's visor position here, when there would be poor weather. This way, the driver can have his, he can have as much vision as he can because the, it's a lot wider than the prism, the armored prism block, and it prevents 
the elements, either snow or water or even sand, from entering inside of the vehicle. Also connected onto the same mount is another new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line, and it is some kind of a hand pump. As for the actual function of functionality of this piece, that is still a mystery to me. However, from the real 222s that I've seen, they all seem to have this type of canister here that connects via plumbing to this spring-loaded hand pump. If it is for fuel or oil, is currently unknown to me. However, if any of you viewers do have an idea of what this, the purpose of this item is, please go ahead and jot that down in the comments below. As for the part itself, it was studied in detail from the original one that is in the Littlefield collection and is has all of its detailings on it, including its small little rigidity ribs, which are found on the tail section here of the hand pump. The hand pump itself is spring-loaded and is just a simple return spring. The operator would simply pump this little hand pump until either enough pressure is in the system for whatever it may be used for. On this edge here of the interior we have another mount. This mount here contains a fire extinguisher and a spare no-tech light. The fire extinguisher here is from Armor Packs, and Armor Packs' resin fire extinguisher has been used on many of my models, if you check back in my other video listings, and it's a very nice casting, which is very detailed. The no-tech light you see here is actually a spare from my Dragon 1-6 scale swim wagon. The 1-6 scale swim wagon kit has a lot of runners that are borrowed from the, the couple wagon kit that they have, and pieces like the no tech light are not used on the swim wagon. So, and so I just found it in my spare parts bin and simply fabricated a strap and mounted it to the no tech light mount as it would on the real vehicle. Currently, on the front portion, I am still working on the battery, which will be fitted to this battery tray here, as well as some electrical wiring that will be mounted on a box that would be found on either side of the steering column. Once those last fittings are added, the front portion of the interior is complete. Moving from the model's front portion, we can see that I've been started to mount a lot of the crew equipment to the vehicle. On this side of the vehicle, which was mentioned to elaborate further, which was mentioned in an earlier video, we have the food canteen, there's two of them mounted in these two locations. We have here the bread bag, and here we have the MP40 submachine gun. Moving our way to the rear portion here of the vehicle, we have fitted the model's radiator. The model's radiator is another new addition to the EastCoastArmory.com product line, and we will be going over in that in more detail now. Because the radiator is inside the armor car, I went ahead and made a second radiator for illustration purposes. This radiator here is the exact same version that is mounted in the armor car, and this is built from the kit that is posted on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. The radiator itself is very detailed. We have the, the fluid cap. If we notice, the radiator has its ribs, rib detailing in, on the radiator face. And also, it has the back portion of the detailing. The propeller here is designed to spin and is connected to a pulley. On the 222, this pulley here would connect to a series of pulleys, which would be connected to the or run off of the engine's uh, spindle. The propeller uh, is spun, which cools the liquid that's inside the that's drawn into the radiator which then flows back into the engine that is done via these two plumbing lines we have here on the real 222 one line would ex would emerge from the cooling system into the and or into the radiator and then once it it condensed and cooled down would exit from the other pipe that would then re-enter the cooling system 
Also, if we could see detail-wise, we have the rib detailing on the interior portion here of the fan housing. So the fan housing itself is a very detailed standalone element and could be even used in, say, maintenance dioramas uh, with 1-6 scale figures. For size comparison, we have here two radiators. This version here is from the 222 armored car, and this version here is from the German Tiger 1. As you can see, the 222s is a lot thinner and is a lot shorter, or it's more stout than the version on the Tiger 1. And keep in mind, on the Tiger 1, the tank would receive two of these, which would hook up to an, uh, a fan cluster system, which would be mounted to these fasteners over here. While on the 222's radiator, the, it's more like that of a standard automobile, where the back portion here of the radiator hooks up directly to the fan, which would then hook up directly to the engine. On Tiger 1, the cooling system is a little bit more elaborate, and that information can be found on another one of my videos. And here goes the radiator mounted in the model's engine bay. So we can see the propeller detailing is spinnable, like what was mentioned before. Now, unfortunately, because of time constraints and due to the lack of reference material needed, I will not be doing the model's engine. The Hork engine, which is found on these 222 armor cars, was actually very difficult to find reference images on, and that also combined with time limitations is the reason why I will not be fabricating one for this model at this time. On the model's interior portion here, we can see where the radiator is actually merged in with the model's firewall. The radiator itself is behind this meshwork here, and the 222 has this meshwork and frame which protects the radiator from any foreign material from entering into the engine bay. With the 222's design with a large open top turret that we will have here, there is plenty of airflow entering into the armor car and then into the radiator compartment. Also, in addition to the large open top turret, we also have here a large screen, which I mentioned earlier. On the 222, there's a very elaborate screen and grill mech or system that will be fabricated into this system, into this area over here. This grill work is optimized to allow plenty of airflow into the entire vehicle, more specifically into the radiator section in the rear. On the reverse side of the model, we could, ha we could see that more of the interior detailing has been added. We have here the grenade racks, which were functional and which were described earlier, as well as the, uh, the gas mask canister. Two more of these are going to be fitted to the front quarter panels of the model, which were discussed earlier. All of the equipment used on the model are that from Dragon and were purchased from Toy Soldier Brigade. It's a, he's a great vendor and he ships the parts very quickly. Highly recommend it. All that is left to complete the model's interior, besides some crew equipment and the gun, is to continue the model's floorboards. If we notice the floorboards stop at currently stop at the hard point here for the main gun. The floorboards are going to be continued. They're going to rise up and go over the hard point and they're going to go around the transmission. The transmission itself has this diamond plate guard box, which will be fabricated, which will follow this, tra this angle system here. The guard box goes over the transmission and protects it from any damage. On either side of the transmission, there's going to be two smaller boxes, which are used for storage. All of these details are going to be fabricated next. After that is fabricated, it is going to be then onward to the model's main gun and main gun detailing. Before I was able to get the cab into painting, I had to first complete some of these fastener detailing on the exterior portion here of the model. The reason for completing these external detailing now is because these fastener details are also present on the interior portion of the model. The 222, like many German tanks and other German AFV, had a removable top roof. The roof was held on via these small fasteners and nuts. 
The nut, these nuts and fasteners would be mounted to angle iron, which would have been welded to the frame or to the body, which we see here. This is a common fabrication technique done by the Germans during World War II. On the exterior portion, because of the turret, the screws are slot screws and they are countersunk into the top plate to prevent them from getting snagged by the turret. On the front portion here, where the turret does not interfere, we can see that the fasteners are hex bolts. And on the two corner panel sides of the front, we have a strip of angle iron. The angle iron is also held on with the slot screw fasteners. The angle iron is nothing more than a bullet shield that will pretend that would protect the turret from getting damaged from any type of stray bullets or even fragmentation. In addition to completing the, fast, the roof fastener detail, the mounting system for the radiator grill has also been fabricated. The angle pieces are simply plastic angle and then glued on around the rim. These will hold on the metal grill once fabricated. And that concludes this project update video for this 1-6 scale German SD KFZ 222 armor car. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1-6 scale tank builds as well as other 1-6 scale detail components. Thank you.